Um, now we have to do the induction again. Yeah. Right? Okay. Sorry about that. I'm Grant Richards. And I'm Tim Allen. And this is Humanities 25 MCTV 6 or 26. Um, there are three classes that are bundled together. Um, we do that um, not only because all of the, the classes work well together as we make our uh, do our productions, our, our film productions, but also it, it almost allows you to repeat the class um, two times, um, two additional times. So, um, and we're gonna we're working on um, allowing students to audit. Um, so, why would I want to repeat the class then, Grant? Because the shoots we do are really really cool. Yeah, so. and also it gives you the opportunity that maybe in your first semester you didn't feel confident enough to step up and be a director. Maybe you didn't have something you wanted written. Maybe you didn't get an opportunity to be the cinematographer or the audio. You but you can really use the first semester to learn what skill you want to do because filmmaking is not only a, like a tech multiple technical skills but it's uh, you know, an artistic process. And it really does take a team to make a film because you, you, you really honestly can't do it all by yourself because you can't be, I mean, you could set up the camera and act, but will, will that be as good as possible? No. And we produce very, very quality films here at Gablin. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the other thing that we should talk about is that this is dual modality, meaning that um, you can take the class entirely online, and those are some of the people that are um, watching in on Zoom. What up, Zoom? You can take it entirely in person. Like and subscribe below. To, uh, <laughs> click, click in the comments. Sorry, Grant. Sorry. Um, you can take it entirely in person, and those of you who are sitting here might be doing that. Or you can do a combination of the two. Um, maybe you can come to lectures, but not the shoots. Or even better... Uh, if you can't make uh, lectures come to the shoots, because that's where we're, every shoot is going to be different. We could do a different horror film every week and still every week would be different. There are different problems. And what's a shoot? It, it's when we're uh, <laughs> um, shooting movies. We're making we're filming. filming. That's a, we're on set. We're actively filming. We're, like we're the, not hunters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing is I always tell Oh, I'm on a shoot right now. What are you hunting? Is what my mom's <laughs> joke is like. Ah, that was funny the hundredth time. But for those people who it might be your first time uh, at all taking production, yeah, we call our sets and when we're filming sh our shoots. Yeah. Um, the other thing too that this class is different than it's ever been before because we're splitting up the lectures and labs. So today's Thursday. We've never had this class on a Thursday before. Um, so we are going to do our lectures where we talk about um, techniques or um, equipment um, and concepts, and we'll do that on um, Thursdays and then Fridays. And to be honest with you, um, we are not going to always shoot at 11.05 and be done at 235 or whatever the lab hour you think we're uh, gonna be done on time yeah we're early never um so part of this will be um if you can only come to some of them uh be aware that um we might start early because we want a sunrise or quite often we we will shoot after dark and so we won't start at 1105 we're going to start at well in daylight savings time right now we could start at five um and be in the dark um and we're not even going to be in the tv studio all the time sometimes we'll be here but sometimes we'll be other places on campus we shoot at my house uh, a lot we'll shoot um we're on uh, one shoot we're gonna be we're shooting at the beach yeah um, on location that's what it's yeah called, so, so uh, there'll be a variety of times and places um those people who are in the class i just gave you the film production schedule if you're at home, look under week one, and it's the film production schedule. Click on it and open it. You'll see that um, near the top, it says last updated. I did that this morning. So um, I will constantly make changes as we as we finish things, I'm going to gray them out uh, so you can still see them, but you'll know that it's, it's, it's done. But um, the projects are in red. Um, and some of the TV, the Gav TV news, um, were two entities We're film production, but we're also, uh, we have a, a news program. Uh, we'll, we'll have some shoots on there that we hope 
um, you will join us. And for example, tomorrow night, we're filming the men's and women's basketball games at Gavlin. If you want to be a ca camera operator, um, come join us. Um, we're we're going to have two or three cameras, depending on how many people uh, are uh, able to come. We also need people in uh, talent. We need people in front of the camera, those people doing the interviews. Um, so if you want to be a sports broadcaster, interview the coaches and players, um, we hope you will join us for that as well. So uh, we'll have time to talk about these things, but the schedule is up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Any, and, and really anybody's, uh, anytime we have a shoot at all, you're all invited, no matter what class it is, even if it's not for this class. If you just want to be on set and get experience, we shoot a lot of different things with that result in a lot of different opportunities. And uh, like anything, the more experience you have, at least trying something, we, we're, we're a college. We're all about learning, right? We want to make the best thing possible, but we are all learning. Uh, by, and a lot of learning is learning by doing. We're not going to let set you up to fail. We definitely want everything to look great, but come to the live events and see what live filming is like. It's different than being on set. Way different. It's uh, I've worked on live television broadcasts. I worked on film sets. Night and day different, and it's a whole different industry. So if you're interested in shooting live sports or live news, uh, our live basketball is the closest that we get here uh, at GAF. So definitely something interested. Once we break from talking we'll we'll poll to see if anybody from class can come tomorrow yeah we're gonna That's have sure. we're gonna have a session where we talk about um the projects um we're gonna start it today <laughs> and then do pitches and talk about scripts and who wants to do what uh, and we'll do a more extensive thing tomorrow um so um yeah but um i lost my train of thought sorry what were we we were talking about um our schedule uh yeah on the production schedule so if you look under there's a lot of to be determined so um i'm seeing at least one two three four five of them um so if you want to direct if you want to write um we have lots of opportunities but we have to get them going right away uh it takes a ton of work prepping before you can ever show up on set and it starts with a script so i'm happy to write for you tim's um, working on a screenplay which he may direct himself or if someone loves it and wants to try directing i don't know if you'd be willing That's to, fine, to pass yeah. it off yeah, absolutely. um i am working with jason um jason wanted to, i insisted that he direct something different because he's the horror king um, he loves to kill people and 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 make people crazy and die and all of that. And I said, this time you got to do something very different. So he's now doing kind of a romance tearjerker film, which is out of his comfort zone. Um, so I helped him write the, the screenplay, but that's going to be the first thing um, and, and just unforeseen. The, yeah, just the poll right now, who feels like they want to direct this semester? People in the chat, you can raise your hands too. Yeah, anyone okay. at home? Great. And do you have scripts? Jason, do you have ideas? Right. This is absolutely something that you need to uh, come to us and we'll discuss and figure out where we can slot it in. Yeah. So to um, come tomorrow, either on Zoom or in person, and be ready to kind of pitch ideas. If you want to direct, do you want to write as well? I mean, you raised your hand. Do you want to write? Okay, uh, do you have something in mind or? Um, okay, so hopefully maybe tomorrow you have something brewing and you can um, uh, talk about it. Jason raised his hand. Who else raised their hand in here? Um, do you have something? I have a couple of ideas. I wanted, to, I'm a big like snowboard skier, so I wanted to make a, a, a documentary about that, but I also wanted to make like a, a horror parody kind of thing, like a, like a comedy. Okay, so. Everyone has to do an individual project, and that sounds like the snowboarding um, would be the perfect example for something for you to do as an individual. Because there's, I'm telling you right now, there are limitations to this class. We cannot go up to yeah. the Sierras and and do that type of thing. So if you can, then you can film that, edit it on your own, and that'll be your individual project. And, and I think that's a good opportunity to like point out something. 
think at least think about what resources you have. If you're going to pitch us an idea, is it smart to pitch us? I want it to be a Roman Empire epic with horses and whatever. Well, think about what that takes to do. A, our films tend to be, you know, two, five, ten minutes long. Uh, okay, so we can do a scene, but I want to do a Colosseum scene. Where are, we, where are you going to film it? Well, we have a green screen, right, Grant? But costuming, actors, there's always like, think small. I always, I always like, it, it's great to go big. You can do sci-fi, you can do some weird stuff, but just know that what are the limitations that you have? Because we're producing it here uh, at Gavlin. So what resources do we have? What practical locations that we have? We can pretty much use the campus as long as we schedule it enough. And we have our, our soundstage here at Gav, but- So speaking of that last semester, um, David shot a, a scene that took place, well, first of all, on campus by the student union, and then we went into one of the science labs. Um, so there's us using the campus. Um, two semesters ago, we had a couple of scenes shot up by the lake. We had, there was a Western scene where there was a gunfight, and then there was a samurai fight scene. They happened up on, on campus, but up by the, the, the top pond. We have a pond, yeah. 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 There's... There's facilities here. There's there's woods. There's there's stuff you can film. We filmed down at the pond where the ducks and the turtles are. What right? When oh we yeah. Come, uh, on campus, that was part of the samurai one as well. There's there's limitations though. So just when you're thinking of your idea, uh, like if you're gonna say like, okay, I have an idea. It's it's a it's a love story, but I have thirty five different locations. Uh, Grant, what's the problem with that? <laughs> how do we get there and yeah. i mean there are 35 different locations 35 different setups and each setup can take anywhere between an hour to e even even things like changing lighting within the same location can be an hour hour and a half to change lighting and, and props and, and uh, make adjustments it can be extremely time consuming now if you're having to go mobile pit, pack up all equipment go to another location find parking get out all the equipment you know how many days do we typically give our we, students to film uh we typically want you to do a one-day shoot um if you get a second or third day, it's because we've talked about it in advance and we've talked about locations in advance. So for example, I'm gonna use a Jason's film, um, Unforeseen. Um, we're gonna shoot um, a two beach scenes, but they're on the same beach. Um, my family has a place where we can park and have access to the beach and we're doing it on a Saturday. So I'm not expecting a lot of you to come. It will be cool if you if you can and want to come, but it's over at Sunset Beach, which is kind of the Watsonville uh, area. Um, and I'm hoping it's not going to rain because yeah. um, rain ruins the whole thing. If you shoot outdoors, you have you you're subject to weather, noise issues, um, traffic, airplanes, um, birds, birds. I mean. Uh, there are a lot of problems with, with sound, um, but weather this time of year can be a real uh, issue. Um, so we might have to reschedule. Um, There's pros and cons for location filming and in soundstage filming as well. So these are all considerations. So when you pitch your idea tomorrow, just think about it. Just Just go like, why does anything have to be a period piece? First of all, if you take a period piece, oh, this is the 1970s. Everybody's got to be dressed in the 70s and have 70s hair. What is that important to your story? Yeah, well, maybe this isn't the story to tell. Is there a way to put it in the future? Like, the, I almost think it's easier to be a future movie because you could just make up like fake clothes or whatever, or make them all dressed some way, then do the past because everyone knows what the past looked like, right? And uh, westerns, I feel like. We have a lot of students who shoot westerns because they have access to a western set, a actual one of, set. One of our directors this semester loves westerns, and he has so many outfits and hats and guns and belts and chaps and and everything. And you um, have that if you have all of that resources, great, let's do it. But yeah. uh, but be aware because yeah. we don't have. I have. I tend to have things like police uniforms, um, nurses, and doctors 
outfits. Um, yeah, yeah, I do have some priest stuff because we've had some confessional um, scenes. Um, we can readjust this set, move walls, um, uh, do some things, uh, but this is very limiting. It's it's just three walls. Um, I do volunteer my house if I like a project enough and I think it works. Sometimes we can use a bedroom or my front door hallway. Um, just for people at people at home, I'm showing them the set that you can see. This is just not a room. It's actually a, a set there. And we do have different art to go on the wall, different furniture. We can move things around. This is <laughs> this has been um a bedroom it's been an office it's been um a living room with like television yeah, it, it, was, it was like a laboratory for the oh yeah the genre project right like yeah it's it's yeah an interrogation room yeah it's, you know we've had a, a a variety of things that we can do and i swear you can't tell um if it's the right type of space but if you try to turn this into a kitchen yeah yeah, maybe not so good. So. Yeah, we don't have... We can definitely play around with it and try to set design it, but yeah, it's one of those things we don't want everything to look exactly the same too. Yeah. So so there are opportunities to shoot at different locations. Grant opens his, his house up a lot. But what's the ultimate intention with these films, Grant? To make great films with interesting stories, interesting characters, things that will grab um, audiences' attention and... and to make good movies um yeah, who's gonna see it how would oh, oh do? so um every year we have a film and television major i'm sure most of you know about that um because you're here and a lot of you are majoring in film but um and if you aren't you will be soon yeah i love this class yeah um every year we pick the best of the best the best um student films and they're shown at our student showcase this year it's um saturday may 4th um and we have uh it's about a two hours of what star wars yes yeah, yeah that, wars. that was completely um on accident but maybe a nice coincidence um <laughs> it was geronimo has made this joke like twice already speaking of there's geronimo everybody let's say hi to geronimo he's in charge of the facilities he's a facility manager and uh those uh he he has the keys and everything so a good person to make friends with okay um again i've lost my train of thought sorry I, no no no. i just we were talking about the film showcase oh film showcase yeah um so we're gonna play the, the best films what's really kind of exciting about that is um tim had the idea of um well i i wanted awards and tim said hey let's call them the gabbies and so like the oscars we have the gabbies um, the best director, best actor, actress, screenwriter, editor, um, those of best you, film. Yeah, those of you who are on campus here in the TV studio, as you walk out of the uh, the door uh, to leave, on the right-hand uh, wall, you'll see the plaques from every year that we've done Gavi Awards, and it has the name of everyone, every film that was nominated, every person that was nominated, and you can see who won every single year. That's one of the honors. But the Gavi is actually a big, like, award. trophy. It's yeah. a big, heavy award. They're really cool. Um, so worth... Uh, worth just to get that but the the most important part is you your films are submitted are shown we have judges who judge it and then uh the winners uh will all come together and there's usually about 300 400 of us oh, in, more in, than the, that. in the uh the, the, gavlin theater i bet you we we close to, to sell out it's free but I, we'll pack the place so yeah. you're going to have an audience of five six hundred people uh, watching your movie so it's exciting it not everyone gets an audience and um, if your film is chosen to be in the showcase um, you will have a very large audience and then they are um, put online and you will get people yeah, oh that's it yeah. I'm All right, well, sorry. We're we're problem solving some lighting issues right now, but uh, uh... but anyways, the showcase it's it's exciting. We get um, very excited about it, and 
we not only want you all to come, we're also one of a, there you go. Yeah, there we right. go. Um, we're going to have um, interviews. So if you look oh. at our schedule on May 3rd, we're going to film a lot of the nominees. And um, as a class, we're going to mic them, we're going to shoot them, we're going to light it so that everything looks great. Um, so for the Gab TV, we're going to do a promo um, for the event and then uh, film um, the nominees uh, of <laughs> we're getting distracted um, um so anyways that's the the, the showcase in the gabbies yes and and it really is the best of the best we judge uh the panel of judges which are five six seven how many usually about five judges get oh, together no, and watch that. every film that's submitted if you make anything you can submit it but not everything makes it into the film showcase we're limited with tw two hours worth of films and this also includes the films from last semester and this semester. So, yeah, uh, honestly, and the winner of the 72 hour film competition. <laughs> yes. Who's in the uh, class right here. Yeah. Um, and it's um, usually the winner of the best alumni film, best alumni film. So former GAF students can can submit as well. We'll definitely see one or two uh, submitted. But yes, uh, it's it's a big honor. It's a lot of fun. We have a party afterwards, and it's that's a the great best time. part too. Yeah, yeah, it's champagne. Just, it's just cool to watch and... fil films and have your friends and family react and see all the other stuff that you're making with. My mom will be there, and she'll be as confused as always uh, by like, why did what, what, what's going on? I don't get this. Why did everyone die in that one? Well, yeah, but most people die in student films. So, <laughs> and, and it, these are so much more than student films. These are just films that yeah a lot of these films go be. on and are in festivals and oftentimes uh we have a lot of winners of festivals yeah. um some people will say hey well how come i didn't win a gabby and yet i i entered in all these other festivals and won uh, all these other awards because the gabbies are good and mm -hmm. competitive so uh, yeah. it's exciting yep um uh we got off track a bit yeah um the so, schedule yeah sorry i'm gonna uh, derail this one more time uh it, Always, if you have questions or comments, raise your hands and let us know. Same as the chat. We'll, we like to answer as it goes. Uh, both of us looking now, squinting to be like, is that a question? Oh, okay. Thumbs cool. up. Thumbs up. Right? Yep. Thumbs up. Who can see your messages recording on? Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> time is the lab tomorrow. Um, it will be at the scheduled time at 11.05 tomorrow. Um, but it, that might be the only time it's at 11.05. It'll depend on the, the films that we start to shoot. It was supposed to be at um, 12 or 12.30 and just it's suddenly it's 11.05 and it's I don't because, know. Because of the schedule, the 10.05 class ends at 11 and because of scheduling, you couldn't wouldn't be able to sign up for both classes if they were at the exact same time. So based off of that they tend to make classes start at 05 or whatever. Yeah, there, there's specific times. You can have, show up early, that, no problem. I, I'll be here, you know, I'll be setting things up and, um, but technically the lab's supposed to start at 1105. And because we're gonna be in here and not filming, um, we're doing, that's our pitch meeting. Um, it, 1105 seems like the, the, the best time to do it. Grant, what if I can't make the sh the filming? filming or tomorrow no what if i can't make like a shoot okay so um i will be at everything tim who's got another full-time job as a content creator for um christopher ranch um comes when he can um we love it when he can come but he can't always be there but what he always will do is um we will shoot bts behind the scenes footage of every shoot so that if you can't be on set, um, you will see behind the scenes footage. Um, and then Tim is the one who narrates it. Tim will explain things that, because as we're filming, we're not always saying, oh, we're switching from a 35 to a yeah. 25. Um, 
And Tim will say, well, why would they switch from a 35 to a 25 um, millimeter lens? What does that mean? Uh, yeah, uh, we I, want a wider angle. And and so he'll explain those things. Make fun of the shirt Grant's wearing or whatever. Uh, no, but what's important to note is if you can't be on the shoot, you get credit for being on the, all the shoots, right? Um, and you have to have participation. That's part of the grades. I'm sure we'll go over grades in a little bit. Yeah. So the other thing too is for those of you who are at home, um, we're going to have behind the scenes footage, which um, we will shoot. Those who are there will shoot. Tim will narrate it and upload it. He's going to start a discussion and you have to um, take part in the discussion to get points. Um, Tim does some things to make sure that you're actually watching all the BTS footage and, you know, paying attention. And so you get your participation points by watching the BTS footage and then uh, participating in the discussion. If you're here, all you have to do is show up. If you're on set, you're watching and learning. I'm going to highly encourage you to do things to be a key grip and help me with the C stands and set up the lights. Or uh, if you want to learn camera, be a first or second AC until you learn it. And then you can become um, a DP for one of the shoots or uh, get on um, the mixer and, and record audio or boom or what. I mean, there's a, a ton of jobs, um, but we're going to, I'm going to encourage you, Tim and I, and you know Jason and others, um, will encourage you to do the the jobs on set. Like any class you take at Gap, you get as much out of it as you put into it. And with our class specifically, like if you're here just to pass the class, that's easy. Just show up and you don't have to do anything. But if you want to like direct, if you want to learn at the shoots, take the opportunity to say, hey, I want to do this. And maybe not at the first shoot are we going to let you be the camera operator, but we'll let you be assisting camera so you can learn from the camera, the the uh, cinematographer uh, on how to use the camera so that maybe two, three, four shoots down the way, okay, this is our new cinematographer. We love to train the next person who's gonna be the main cinematographer. Same with director. If you wanna be a director and learn how to direct, it's great to like start off as a script supervisor or go to be an assistant director. There's tons of roles on the set and everything is important. Even the person who just picks up the uh, tripod and moves it to somewhere else. These, or, or the person who helps tear down the, the, uh, uh, the equipment. The best, some of our favorite uh, participants are the ones who are there from start to finish. And finish doesn't mean like cut, we're done. This is one our, thing that we had we our learned. martini shot. Hey, we just finished the shoot. That doesn't mean everyone time to go because Rainbow. there's almost always an hour worth of cleanup after you finish your last shot. We have to take down all the equipment. We have to move everything. You know, we have to put everything back in Grant's car and he has to drive it back to his house or whatever. So use this opportunity. It, it really is as much time as you can give to it. And especially if you're passionate about film, those of you who have taken the class before know what it's like. And it's great to see familiar faces. You're at every shoot, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, one of the things that are super important and it, it might seem uh, insignificant, but how you um, roll cables is a very big deal. That's something um, you learn. I have a friend who right after he got out of a film school in college, he showed up, got hired on a film set. He was asked to roll XLR cables and he just started going over his elbow. He got fired. The audio guy came, yelled at him and said, get off of his set. Um, AJ, a, a mutual friend of ours, um, who's a, a filmmaker, said that on the first uh, professional shoot he was on, um, the guy that he was working with, the the uh, DP said, hey, uh, get me some C-47s. And he said, what is a C-47? And the guy said, if you don't know what a C-47 is, you don't belong on a film set. Get out of here. He got fired because he didn't know what something was. Um, so you're going to learn all those things. So this is one of the things that I think is so good about what Tim and I do is it's practical learning, hands-on learning. You're going to make movies and you're going to learn how to do things by actually doing them. If you go to, well, we've had a lot of students who've moved on, gone to San Jose State or CSUMB or UCLA, USC, um, good film schools. 
and they say they 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 made a lot of movies here. They got there and finished and got their degree, and they never made another movie. That they don't do that. Everything's book learning. You sit in a classroom and uh, uh, instructor here. lectures yeah. at you, um, and that's not what we do. We're doing hands-on things so that you're going to learn techniques and skills and equipment firsthand so that when you're done, you know how to do the work on a film set. Yeah. So um, we're really proud of that. Do you, know, you mind if I tell your story? Actually, why don't you tell your story? Oh, okay. Then I'll do it. Um, so Marty, um, you have your film de degree, right? From CSUMB. Um, good school. Uh but she's now here making movies. Did you make movies at at? I made like short little assignments that I wouldn't really consider movies. My the only movie I I made was my senior thesis. Yeah, that's really common. Your they wait until the the your second semester of your senior year to do a, a senior thesis. Really, really common. So, what about the first three and a half years? You're not on set. You're not making movies. Um, we have a lot of students who graduate and make their living being hired by um, you know, students who are wanting to graduate because they need actual uh, people with film experience and know how to operate cameras and record and, and light scenes. Yeah. Um, and so they do quite well getting hired by college students who are doing their senior thesis. So you get more practical experience here at GAP if you take advantage of it. It's to, we, we will instruct you on anything you want on the set, but also like you, if you're going to be passive and just sit there, um, you'll be able to observe. But if you want to do something just and you can go to Grant and I individually and maybe and there is some like anxiety on the set knowing like I don't know what I'm doing, but we're learning and and we'll help you we'll teach you what to do because we want to create as good of project as possible and we all understand that like hey we're all learning we're all not pro professional and, and we're being paid in experience we're being paid in education um so that that is always something that comes in so if you want to do something, let us know and we will facilitate that. We're happy to do that. We'll, we're happy to, if you want to direct, but you don't feel like you have a script, Grant and I have a million ideas that we'd love to shoot that we will happily say, hey, what about this? And you could say, oh, I hate it. And we'll be like, okay, well, what about this? You know, like that's fine too. Cause, cause. Or, or write something specifically for you. You yeah. give us a genre and maybe a character or maybe you have an actor um, or two in mind, and we'll write something specifically for them. So we're, we're happy to do that with you. Our goal is to make you um, succeed. We want you to get at what you want out of the class and have those experiences and um, to make movies. Um, and um, filmmaking, there are so many departments, and we're going to talk about all the jobs on set a week from today. Um, but we th I think the best directors have worked in all the different departments. You can't just be a director if you haven't done some editing and done some acting, in my opinion, um, and um, worked with the camera and lighting. And um, you, you kind of need to know everything. So if your goal is to be a director, then do a little bit of everything so that you can be a better director. If you want to be a cinematographer or a Steadicam operator or a DP or something, we'll give you lots of experiences, but try other things as well. So that it, it's, um, you might never like, we might all come into this class and be like, I'm a director. I want to be a director. And then I remember being on set and, and directing for the first time. I'm like, Oh, I like directing fine, but I love editing. That's like where I feel like I, have the most control and I feel the co most comfortable. And I only knew that by doing the experience. So it's definitely the, take the opportunity to try something that maybe you don't like. Maybe you're like, wow, I really love audio. An audio, uh, a great audio engineer operator is invaluable to a shoot. You'll get, you'll get asked to be on everybody's shoot if you're a great audio operator. Um, if you can do makeup, if you can do sets, if you can produce, there's so many different roles and everything is vital to for a really slow and no budget film. So if you have the skills, you're going to be asked to to 
do this. But the best way is to try everything. Like, yeah, you know, like, okay, I sat here and I, I held the slate for the entire time and that was fine. And I can do that if I need to. Also, I have worked uh, since I went here to Gav some like 20 years ago, graduated, went to San Diego State and got my degree in film and television. And I've worked in uh, content creation industry, t live television, uh, on film, uh, on a documentary. I've done uh, uh, social media and I've worked for a marketing firm for 20 years. And what I learned, uh, especially working in a small uh, company is being able to wear many hats made me even more valuable to the company. So what did that mean? That means I, I left film school being like, I'm a editor. I want to be an editor. But then a guy's like, Hey, can you help me film something? And handed me the camera. And I was like, okay, well maybe camera's not my strongest suit, but I'm getting paid. And now I'm doing this and just having confidence because I had held the camera before I was able to like, Hey, I have more experience than the guy who paid me. And that way I was able to not only get paid by for doing it, but I had on the job learning experience. I was learning and it was like, now I can pretty much any job you have on a film set, I pretty much can do. And if not, I can fake my way through it to a, enough to where it won't be a detriment to the uh, whole production. So that's what we want to give you is, is enough experience to be like, if someone's like, Hey, can you run audio? Yeah. I've run audio before. Um, and then be like, Hey, this is this, I, you can, you can have a resume and, and be, I worked on these films and, and I did having, this on this film. Yeah, I did this on that. Having film. experience and knowing the terms alone can sometimes get you the job just being like, confident in like I know what the, I know what a C47 is every who, who knows what the C47 is yeah those well you'll learn by the end of the semester or probably by the end of class well, or first shoot yeah exactly it's a it's a closed pin by the way um yeah oh all right where are we at we talk we talk schedule um, the, or? the one thing that um that Tim and I um, do or, or talk about a lot of uh, master students. So those people who've been taking the class, uh, who've done it in the, in the past, have repeated, um, those are our master students. I'll tell you right now, Jason is our uh, master DP. He's done it more than anyone else. Um, I would DP? say director of photography, oh, cinematographer. Okay. What does that do, Grant? Um, well, in a, uh, for all practical purposes, the person who's um, kind of in charge of the red camera. Um, Marty is trained in, in all uh, areas, great director, and is going to be a cinematographer a lot. So get to know the two of them if you're going to direct, because you're going to want one of them on your camera crew. Um, but you will all have the opportunities to... to um, and um, you will have Sophie's not here, but Sophie will be at a lot of our shoots. David Butterfield is not here today, but he'll be at a lot of our shoots. Who am I forgetting? Um, David Ortega they, was uh, it, directed, directed last, last semester, probably direct this semester. Yeah, good. So, um, anyways, uh, enough of that. Um, points and grading, you brought that up. Um, you all have to make an individual project. We're signing it right now. You have the entire semester to work on it. Um, and it's due on May 24th. Um, if you want to turn it in by April 15th, we can watch it and see if it could possibly play in the showcase. What do you mean individual project? Didn't we just, didn't you guys just say it's a team effort to make a film? It is, um, but um the class can only do one thing one project a week uh, or so i and tim and i are producing those we're the ones who find locations and resources and work with the directors and the writers um to set those up um and if you're lucky or you want to be one of those directors that can be your project but if you are going to kind of learn as you go you want to do so for example you talked about the snowboarding that cannot be one of our projects. We do not have the funds or the resources, the time to drive to the Sierras and film snowboarding. But that would be a great project for you to do on your own. You have a GoPro or something? Yeah. Like you could put together a snowboard music video. You could make a documentary. Obviously, we can give you tips and 
and advice on how to film it. Um, and, and then but, Kim's teaching the editing class and we have an editing suite. So if you now have your footage and you now want to put it together, um, you can go and sit in on Tim's class and edit in there and get advice from him. You don't even need to have a computer or software. It's all there you know, provided for you. Uh, if you're in Tim's editing class, yeah, got several. Um, uh, now you're already set up because you're going to shoot footage that you can then edit in, in his class. Yep. So did you have a question? Oh, okay. Um, the, um, um, so that's a big part of the, the, the project, which is, Something like four or five hundred five hundred points. points. Five hundred points. Half your grade um, is your individual project. Um, a big part of it is participation, and that's if you come. If you come regularly, uh, and you and you're working hard and paying attention and trying a variety of things, almost for me, you're you're going to get a, an A in the class. Um, <laughs> well, I always say to Grant, if we can remember that you were there, uh, that's a good sign. That means that you're participating. And we have a you know a big class. We'll probably remember everybody, but w if we can be like, oh, that's the audio guy, or that's the audio person, that's the person who stays and helps the whole time. And we if you're a key, if you have a key position, you are ADing or DPing um, a project with somebody. You can kind of count that as your individual project. Um, not that you might not want to make your own a separate one, but you you can. Um, if you're in kind of a key, a key position, if you're at all concerned about, hey, do I have an individual project? Just come up and ask us, and we'll be like, well, what what are you doing? And then we can tell you, no, you need to do something else or yeah. not. So. Then the last 20% um, is a, uh, the final exam. And um, here's a real advantage to come in, in person. Uh, first of all, on the final day, we're going to watch your films um, together. It's really difficult to, to do that on Zoom. We'll try it if you if you can't. And we'll usually send links so you watch them on your own as we're watching them here. But um, the best thing is, is that the, the test is oral. Um, and we have a good time. You only have to answer a couple questions and we laugh and, and, and everyone, have we had anyone not got, gotten an A? Um, Cause we'll just keep asking you questions until you know something that, that works. If you take it at home, there is a, a, a multiple choice test. Um, the computer can't give you um, help or options or whatever. So um, it pays to come um during finals week and it's, it's but if good. you if you complete online the test is manageable too it'll be everything covered uh there um if you can't come to the shoots the way you get graded for your participation is by watching the the behind the scenes and commenting and saying what you learned and and i'll i'll put prompts there um but also like okay i'm super concerned i want i want 150 percent uh uh, in this class, Grant, what what can I do to get even well, beyond well, there's it? There's two um, extra credit um, opportunities that will give you a ton of extra uh, credit, and um, I'm I'm thinking two to three hundred points each time. One is the showcase. We want everyone here. It's almost should be mandatory that on May fourth, put it in your phone right now. Save the date because yeah. you're going to be watching possibly your film, but your some of your uh, best classmates' films. Something you worked on. Something you were on set. Yeah, on. yeah, um, yeah. So for sure, get points for going. You get points for winning a Gabby. Oh yeah, if you win, <laughs> don't worry. Don't about worry it. about the um, grade. <laughs> but the other thing that I want to say that I'm not sure you're, if you're thinking about is. Every few years, um, our film and television program uh, creates a makes a feature film. Um, our second one was a few years ago on the couch, um, and uh, Samantha wrote and directed. Uh, your cousin uh, wrote and directed a segment, and several other um, uh, people that have come from our program. Tim um, wrote and, and directed a segment. I wrote and directed two, but there were several. It was a, um, a psychiatrist who were working, who was working with a variety of patients, and each session with a patient uh, was written and directed by a different person. But it all fit together into a feature film. So that was called On the Couch. It had a theater run. It ran in a few theaters in this area, and then a bunch of theaters in in the L.A. area. Well, we have our next one coming out. We think. 
uh, it was supposed to be the last week of um, February, but now we're thinking it's going to be the beginning of March. But it's Do Not Disturb. It is a film, feature film, that is nine stories that all take place in the same hotel room. There's a science fiction, there's um, a horror, there's a few dramatic films, there's a um, kind of a rom-com. There, I mean, there, there are a variety of very different films, but the exact same setting. It's the same hotel room. It's a, a we filmed it in a hotel in San Juan Batista, and um, it it was a COVID project. We were going to film it in um, the summer of 2020. And because of COVID and, and limited people in, in rooms, it was cut in half. And then we, so we filmed the, the summer of 2020, the summer of 2021. And then we did a rush job to get it into Sundance. And now um, we've made more improvements, color correction and um, some tightening up of things. And now it's gonna be have a theatrical release, our premiere, and then a big party. Um, oh, yeah. So that if you come, you get 200 points just for coming. And you, if you bring a guest, you get 50 more. If you get an autograph from one of the filmmakers or actors, you get 50 more. So that's your film project. So if you want to experience film, you can watch what, you know, a really um, a local independent film, or you can watch what your classmates are doing or possibly you. Here's the, you here's the, here's the bigger secret too. If you're in any of our other classes. Yeah we let you double dip your extra credits. So editing class for sure counts there too. And your projects can double dip too. 100%. If you film a, 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 a project for this class and edit it in 43, now you can use the same project for both classes. Um, if you're in one of my film appreciation, one of my humanities classes, same goes for that as well. So um, as long as you're doing it this semester, you know, one thing can count for all. Also, I tend to put uh, some extra credit opportunities in the behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, so that's those of you who are in person, well, and in person, if you really want to watch the behind the scenes, uh, you can for sure get the extra credit as well. Yeah. All right. We've been rambling on for a long time. Yep. So um, any questions about the syllabus or grading or assignments any, yeah, or anyone at home? Any questions? Right. You're either covered. Yes. When do you start filming the Do Not Disturb project? No, it's done. It's done. It's done. We're going to watch it. It's, uh, it's going to. They filmed it in 2020, right? 2020, 2020 and 2021 in the summer. We tend to shoot um, the feature films in the summer because, you know, we're not teaching. If, yeah. you know, if, we, if we can't be there, it's my equipment and yeah. we write and direct and produce and um and then we help those students who've been asked and and, uh, and that's something we didn't mention is the other benefit of this course is you really get hands-on experience with industry standard equipment grant lends his own equipment which is a red camera which is what they use to film films that you watch in movie um, theaters. yeah in movie theaters so you'll actually have the opportunity to touch one which is something that like most film departments don't that's the big problem why like someone where like csumb is more restrictive of what you can do is because they only have so much equipment that they can only land out to so many students so that's why usually they hold off until your final semester do you get the opportunity right it's probably hard to schedule the equipment uh, yeah, they only had like a few black magic cameras. They did just get in um, red cameras. Oh, cool. Like, and watch us. It's called like, a year after. Oh, no, fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Any other comments or questions about the class? Well, I'm real curious what you will all want to do. I mean, what yeah. you're in this class, what is it that you hope to get out of it? What is it? How many people uh, want to be directors? I know you. You do you want to act? But great actors here. If you, well, if you're Ariel raised her hand for direct. Oh, you want to direct? Yeah. I, what? I honestly think that would be fun. I want to learn more about like the camera and like the lingo and stuff. You can do it, everything. I mean, we're going to be doing every week. We're doing a new almost every week. There are a couple projects that might that go over into a second week, but almost every week we're shooting a new project. 
So you can act in one, direct one. You can work on the camera crew. And the one thing though with the camera, you got to work your way up. You got to start as a first AC or a second AC and then a first AC and then um, uh, work with Marty or Jason and they will show you how to do all the things. And then pretty soon someone's going to say, hey, Ariel, can you DP my project? Now they're going to be there as well. And so will Tim and I um, to oversee, but um, you can get to that point where you become a DP. They're not going to be here forever. And I need, we need the next DP who's yeah. going to be the person who uh, runs the, the department for, you know, semesters to come. So, and I want everyone to have experiences. If, if, if you want to be Sophie, for example, you, have you met Sophie? You will. Um, Sophie's done it all. Um, she started with acting and then kind of really got into like special effects makeup and then started getting excited um, writing and then directing. And then now she she was the cinematographer for Marty's film that won the 72 hour film competition. Um, and so she's branched out and has tried a lot of different things. She's gotten really good at them. So if you want to try things, you certainly can. And I love the fact that you want to to direct. Do you have a story in mind? I was thinking about doing like a found footage kind of like horror film in the forest about like skinwalkers and stuff. Ooh. So I've been hiking more recently. So I'm like skinwalker. I don't know that term. It's basically like it pretends to be human. It's like Native American folklore. And like usually like a shapeshifter, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, like deers and stuff like that. Like they'll like stand up on their hind legs. Yeah. It must be something just like evil. Creepy monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about it. Um, the, one of the things I've been wanting to use, um, I wrote a screenplay. I actually um, got the rights to a Stephen, Stephen King short story. Um, and I wrote a scene and I really wanted to shoot on, what's the? Mount Madonna? No, the, the trail. Um, I don't remember. I would have stopped it. That. there's the trail um um sprig lake i think it's sprig lake trail it's if you're going up um over hecker pass it's one of the first places you yeah, can sprig, turn out yeah sprig lake trail um because there's a giant redwoods in yeah. this and it, it would be so amazing and there's parking there and we could have parking for lots yeah, of people location um so you could do some really cool things um weather's the issue there yeah yeah and when it's spring is spring is harder for weather than yeah fall. so if we want to do that we probably want to wait for good weather and so maybe it's something we shoot in april um or may um which would mean you wouldn't make, a showcase, make a showcase this, this year yeah but what's a, well that's a great we hold over mateo's film the, the one with cars yeah um uh is going to be in this year's showcase and he shot it um last year so what, but Grant, here's a good question. What is the deadline to submit to the showcase? April 15th. Oh, tax day. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> what a bummer. <laughs> oh. um, if if you are nearly ready. Um, no, but we just, April 15th, if you, if your project is ready, talk to us or near ready. We need to know by April 15th. It's pretty much Grant will lock in. We need to know. And I'll tell you why. There's a lot that has to happen after that. First of all, we have to, the judges have to watch all of them. Um, and then we have to figure out, you know, we, we can't exceed the two hour limit. We've, that was always been our max. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got to have 120 minutes, but also then we have to pick, figure out the nominees, figure out the award winners. Make the, the trophies. The, the, the trophies all have to go in and it takes time to, and they're really nice, fancy trophies and the plaques as you'll see as you walk out, that takes time. We can't just throw that together. Uh, I have to then put all the films together into one long piece that can screen. And so it takes it takes time. So uh, unless you are really close to being done by April 15th, and April 15th, let's make that the deadline. Um, so, um, so if you filmed before- I'll, I'll tell you one thing. And, and also know this, if you filmed the week before April 15th, your film's not gonna be ready. Um, However, Marty shot a film last, was it December? Last, 
second to last week. Second to last week. So we filmed it on a Friday, Saturday. She screened it in the finals day a week later. She had four days to edit. It was great. It was smoke of years last year. Yeah, what did what two or three days or yeah, I think I had it have a it's not but but experienced <laughs> editors. Yeah, and we're all um, this isn't like the preferred uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. method. This is not we're not advising often to the last minute with anything filmmaking. We started shooting Do Not Disturb in 2020 and it's just now gonna be in theaters and there's a reason why Marty didn't wait till the last day for the 72 hour film festival, right? Like you you yeah. want as much time as possible, not as little as time as possible. Yeah. Marty, so, hey everybody, Marty won a thousand bucks over the break. So, so if you need to borrow money. Yeah, exactly. It's not all mine. No, I know. I'm just, <laughs> just saying. Um, <laughs> um, so fantastic. Let's talk more uh, about all the jobs, but writing and directing. Um, you have a script? Do you think you can feel like you can write the script? Or? Uh, I doing the intro to script writing class. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, there you go. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, my goal, and I, I know Tim really loves the idea of writing the first act of a feature film, uh, and some people want that. We have Greg is someone I want to introduce you to, but he's just... Oh, he, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, he wants to write a feature film, and a lot of people do, but I love the idea of writing um, a short screenplays that can be actually produced. My father is a professional writer, um, and has written 26 screen, screenplays. He's won a lot of awards. He had Spike Lee uh, um, optioned his one of his screenplays twice. Um, and yet he's never had one produced. It actually might be our next, one of them might be our next um, project. But uh, if you write something that can be uh, produced, in other words, it's, it's not taking place on Mars, but it's you know something that we can actually shoot um, you might actually have a film that is um, completed, and now you have something tangible to show for it, not just you know something on on the page. So, yeah. Other people, what else? Who else wants to do um, something? Or do what is any, it that? Do we have any uh, aspiring DPs, cinematographers? I know you're going to. <laughs> yeah. Have what, Have you worked with other cameras? <laughs> You will absolutely get the opportunity this semester. Um, and we're going to talk about all elements, uh, not only just the red, but we're going to talk about lenses and um, the rails and, and media and, and all of it so that you'll feel very, very comfortable um, being on the camera crew and, and at some point taking over and being a, a DP if you want to do that. So, great. Audio operators. Anybody interested in focusing on audio? No. It's so a really key important element. The the thing about it is we've had some just take do not disturb because I've been editing it like crazy lately. The audio wasn't um done as well as it should. And so I'm having to do so much stuff in post-production. I'm having to do a ton of Foley and um ADR. Um, so audio is really important. If bad audio takes you out of a project immediately, um, and yet it's one of the less intensive, um, jobs on set, the audio mixer gets to sit and the boom operator might build some muscles holding the boom pole, but, um, that's a skill. Uh, yeah, absolutely a skill. Um, let's see what else, uh, Aspiring producers, anybody interested in the organization management of that? A skill always important to have, right, Marty? Yes. Assistant directors are really key to the set as well. So if you want to be a director, it's always good to have that experience, know what assistant directors do. Uh, what else? Ma yeah, well, you have anybody with makeup skills? Set design? Props? So, so I mean... We had one year a student made an entire Necronomicon from oh. uh, the Evil Dead. Remember the book yeah. face on it? We never got well, to film it either. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Ret Neptune. I forget the word. <laughs> oh, yeah. whatever the three words. We yeah. never got to shoot the second half of that film. Yeah, I know. What a bummer. 
Uh, anyway. Hello, can you hear me? Hey, yes. what's up, Noah? Hey, Noah. Uh, hi. Uh, one, it's Klaatu Verata Nikto. Thank um, you. Hey, don't say it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just summoned uh, undead. Uh, it banishes them. And then two, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm extremely interested in any way I can help with that found footage uh, film the other person was talking about. I was just telling my friend who's taken this class before that I want to yeah, make a found I'm footage. I'm sorry. There you go. There's Ariel. Uh, yeah, I, I was just telling my friend that I want to I want to make a found footage film in the woods and that like Gavilan has a lot of woods and that area has a bunch of like great old buildings and woodlands to like make something like that. Fantastic. So um, we'll introduce you to Ariel if you want to join her or um, uh, somehow we should you know make that one of our projects but that sounds great i also see that you wrote uh, that you want to be get into sports broadcasting um we we're going to shoot several sports events this semester um this friday if, if you're free tomorrow night um we're filming both the men's and women's basketball games mm -hmm. um and we need um a broadcast we need the person in front of the camera who um interviews the coaches and players um, we also need camera operators so if you're interested in joining us um the women's game the men's game starts at five although it'd be nice if you got there a little early to help set up and then the women's game follows at seven and we're going to get uh, footage and then do the interviews after each game and it'll be turned into a gap tv news which all of you should be aware of uh to uh, go to our homepage, scroll on down and see it. We have a YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe. Uh, uh, hey, guys. Um, uh, no, seriously. We yeah, the Views Grant is the featured story right now. It's all about Marty. Uh, I don't know if you saw Marty, but your piece is featured on Gav TV News right now, uh, along with Jason's film, uh, which got third place and... Uh, the other one um in fact all the films that i pretty try to uh, put in as many as possible um the other thing that we're always looking for is do we have actors do we have aspiring actors who want to be in a piece uh, you don't have to but do you know other actors as well we're always looking for we them. have four actors who were in our acting class last semester so they have some training and we know that they're quite good. So oh, uh, you're the fourth. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, good. I was like, I was like, okay, see three. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in every class, though. Come on, give me a break. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like Jason Blind, because uh, he's always in my peripheral. Um, no, but for sure, actors are one of the most valuable resources that we need. And so, if you have friends or you have family that are good. Let let us know. We're always looking to add more. Grant knows a lot of acting actors, professional actors and acting students. And we're always looking for the next uh, person that's in our mind. And we want the directors to be able to cast um, the people they actually see in their mind. Um, so uh, you've already cast most of the parts in your Unforeseen project. I think it will um so it was it's yeah. sierra who acted in a few sierra. things uh cameron who was in the acting class every every lee my daughter is gonna be in it yeah she's gonna get paid too <laughs> she's excited so <laughs> she got on board she'll probably be the most temperamental one and the most non-actor so let's hope for i've already started working with her so uh, do you have to have you seen the script do you just, does she know her lines yes uh, yeah i did read the script okay, sorry so to tell you yeah mommy yeah no i've been practicing i had her do it sad i had, had her do it happy and i miss mom yeah i can do it the first time she the first time i'm like i'm like i'm like can you say i miss mommy and she's like i miss mommy and i was like no do it sad she's like it's mommy and i was like okay let's find somewhere in between uh so you don't want it to be over rehearsed. No, absolutely. Um, a lot of you haven't said anything. What is it that you guys want to do or get out of the class? Try yeah. something, everything. Yeah. That's great. This is the right class to be in. You can yeah. try anything. Get on set and see. I mean, the best thing to do is have you ever been on a set before? Well, that's the great best place to be because then you really can stand there and realize, oh, 
these people are working a lot and these people are working, but it's different. Like you can totally tell like, oh, this seems like something I'd want to do, or this seems like something maybe I don't want to do. But also like, if it's something it seems like you don't want to do, try it. Maybe it's something like, oh, wow, this is way, way more exciting than I thought. Who knew that holding a flag to block light for two hours was fun or whatever. <laughs> uh, there was one set where Grant held a big giant piece of, uh, like a a, branch. a tree branch and he was just moving it back and forth to make the car look like it had was moving was moving the he was affecting the light to make it look like the car was moving so. passing under trees yeah yeah, yeah. And, and i was really nervous because yeah. the car and all had to do was like yeah and the, the car, car was got. really it yeah. was an old classic <laughs> and, um it was a it was this student's dad's car and we were like oh don't. and i'm like sir can, can i touch it he's like oh yeah no problem <laughs> and so i i i was pushing on the back to make it bump up and down right because they weren't actually we weren't actually driving but uh he was giving you the eye too i don't oh like i was nervous it. he's like oh you can push harder and i was like i'm not i don't want to like scratch it or whatever that's the last thing i want to do so. the other thing too with the tv studio we've done multiple car scenes in here the elephant doors open up. We can drive a car right in. Probably have to remove this wall and reorganize a little bit, but um, we could do a car scene. In fact, I could show you some things. We did a scene. I think the first one we ever did was um, uh, one scene that I wrote in a parked car, and I'm not sure who directed it, but um, it was two actors, a uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, and um, they drove up. We so we got the car outside at night. They pulled over and then we did a night scene in the middle of the day in here, um, but we filmed in in the studio. So we could do something like that um, and not have to worry about sound or lighting. Sound or light. That's what's yeah. great about being in the studio is we can control way more elements than if we were on a practical location. But what's the what's the disadvantage? It can tend to look like a set. It does. It doesn't have the natural. Maybe you don't have as many angles or options. It's it's all the good and the bad. You have to decide what you're what you're doing and plan it specifically that way. Because by the way, every we... single thing in a in your film should be planned. We're just not going to go and show up without a shooting script, without planned shots, and just be like, okay, we're going to get it. You know, maybe you've done that for your your small youtube films or maybe you did that with your friends this everything has to be planned it has to tell the story in order that we can accomplish everything because we are managing time resources and people so that's all considerations especially if we're using actors who aren't in the class who aren't getting paid um or are or possibly be uh, being paid um, but if it's for low, no budget filmmaking, you want to consider all of these elements, especially the time of everybody involved, because most people are volunteering their services. And the last thing you want to do is piss off an actor two hours into your shoot and then they leave and then you're like, OK, well, we, did, we don't have an actor. How are we going to film this or do we need to start over? That's yeah. happened. You just hired Grant. Great, great. He's the one who stormed off on my shoe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we have a script that I really want to shoot. It's called Cup Cupid's Arrow. It's two guys and a, a woman, too. Uh, two, three people on a park bench. Um, and I think it's very interesting. I think it's about seven pages long, which means it should be roughly seven-minute film. Um, but it's one location. Um, so pretty easy to shoot, something that we could uh, do. Um, we have one, probably two of the actors, um, the two men that we need, the the woman, but we also need a director for it. So if you want to direct uh, and don't have a script, um, we can talk more about it tomorrow, yeah. but, uh, so just keep in mind, definitely want to hear pitches tomorrow of, Hey, I want to be a director. Now, will everybody get to direct that wants to, if we have a flood, probably not. But it's one of those things that like sometimes things fall out and we just, you know, if you come with an idea, more prepared idea, the more likely you'll get chosen. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? And especially students who are repeat students who have taken the course, they're considerate because you have more experience, you'll be considered first before 
first time students. But again, just so that because you don't know what's involved until you've been yeah, around exactly. it for a while. And those people who have know just how much work first time the shot list yeah. and, um, you know, planning and, and, and all of that. So um, anyways, any other last questions? Um, wrap up the Zoom. Good. To, uh, I don't know if you, is Noah's already gone? He is already gone. So uh, any other questions from those of you who are online? If okay. not, what's, will there be a Zoom tomorrow, Grant? Yes, there will be a Zoom for the, the although I prefer that you come if you can to the pitch session tomorrow. I'm going to stop recording.